Paul Taplett from LionGuard here. Many of you may have woken up today and you're reading about the WebP zero day vulnerability and are starting to dig in to see what you can do to uh, help mitigate any risk against your customers. Well, I wanna show you in LionGuard how you can get a quick, easy win and something we have available for you today to go ahead and, and to deploy in your own environment. What I've done is I've actually created a report that allows me to look at the different browser versions across my end customers uh, endpoints. Let me show it to you here real quick. Right here, I have this browser version audit report. Let's dive in. And if you see here, for all my Windows workstations that I have deployed across all of my environments, I'm starting, I'm able to pull back the Google Chrome version, Microsoft Edge version, Mozilla Firefox, and Brave versions as well, allowing me to export this and, and generate a report and quickly start diving into who I need to target uh, in order to get them updated to the most uh, currently supported version. So I'm going to show you how to build this real quick today uh, so you can go ahead and take action and start moving immediately. Now, inside of our LionGuard library, which you can go to support, LionGuard library, these metrics are going to be available for you there. Now, you'll see that the metrics are going to show up if you're watching this after I posted it or recently after I posted it, after I posted it, they should be showing up here right at this trending column. But you can also go to the specific inspector type, which is going to be Windows Server or Windows Workstation. We'll start with Server. And you're going to see them right here. You'll also see for reference in this video is that the column names for my metrics match the exact name as they're listed here. So let me show you real quick how you would build this out inside of LionGuard. Let's jump over to Admin Metrics. I would go to Add Metric. First, I'm going to go to Server. We'll just call this the Google Chrome version. I'm just going to just take that same same name here. You know, you can copy it exactly. I'll just click into this one, and then you're just going to take this query like this, copy it, and you're going to drop it in right here. Now, it's okay if you don't get a response because that might mean that Google Chrome's not installed on this machine. As you'll notice, whenever you go build a metric, you are choosing a system to kind of sandbox this against. So let me go choose a machine that does have it. There we go. But this Dell server here does have Chrome and I'm returning results. So that's how you can validate uh, what's coming back. Once you're done, you're gonna go ahead and hit save and you're gonna save that metric in. I'm gonna cancel because I've already created this metric. And then you're going to repeat that process. So you're going to go back to add metric, and then we're going to go back to the line guard library, and you're going to grab the remaining um, browser metric versions and go ahead and build them out as you saw in my report. Once you've created all the metrics, you're going to go back to the reports. You're going to go to create template. Give it a name. Oh, since I'm doing this again, I'll call this browser audit demo. My first section is going to be Windows Server. Uh, then I need to choose the Windows Server inspector type. And then you're going to pull those metrics in, those metrics in that you just spun up. So I had a Google Chrome version. And you can just keep searching in here. I had a Firefox version. I have a Brave version. And I have a Edge version. So again, you create the metrics first by just grabbing everything from the library. And then you'll come over here and you'll, you'll, add, you'll, you'll include those metrics in your report template. You'll do one more section here. That's it. That was it for the server. So now we'll go to Windows. Workstation. I'll filter down because this is going to pull back data for the workstation, Windows Workstation. And same thing. I'll get the Firefox. I'll get the Brave. I'll get, excuse me, I'll get the Edge. And I'll get the Pro. So once you're done, you're going to hit Create. And now what you have is you have a template. 
Now you don't have to go choose those metrics and build the report anymore. Now what you can simply do is just create a report. Browser report audit. I can choose if I want this for all environments or some subset of my customers, but I'll say all and hit generate. This is just a review screen where you could remove any uh, metrics or rename anything that you like. You, you do not need to do this. You would just hit create. And then now you're at this screen where you're able to either download this to Excel PDF, you could add a schedule, or you could even share this out and get a link to send to uh, someone else in the company so they can come in and, and pull the report down. Great, so this is a report and a quick way you can start auditing all of those machines very fast and hand that over to, to, your, to your network team, uh, to your, your, your system admins, and get them to start running through that list and, and, and targeting the machines that they need to get up to date. But we looked at how to report and audit, but what if you want to alert and you want to just run a scan against all your machines and understand if they're not on the support, if they're not on the correct version. So you're in luck. I also created an additional metric within this library. And these are the ones that have this web P which are listed um, in parentheses here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the one for the Windows workstation here, but you would follow the same steps for everything else. I'm going to grab this Windows Workstation, Google Chrome, the WebP metric. It even gives you some directions here, like how you would build this alert, and here's the query. But the first things first is we have to have the metric, and let me show you what that looks like. You have to build the metric first, so let's grab that. Right back in LineGuard, let's go build a new metric. Let's add it. This time it's for Workstation. So we'll do Windows Workstation. We'll call this Google, sorry, Google Chrome version. I'll just call it WebP, just like it was titled in, on the library. And then drop the query that you copied from the library right here. What this is doing is this is the, this is the version which is affected with the vulnerability. And it's basically checking is the current version equal to this or less than this version? And if so, I want you to tell me or return what is the version. So right here, I have a machine that is vulnerable because it is on a version that is less than or equal to the current, uh, to the version that they've identified as being vulnerable. So you can repeat these same metrics for the other ones which are listed with the web P at the end. But let me finish this up and show you how to create the alert now. So let's hit save. Uh, I'll cancel here because I already have this. It's just telling me that this already exists somewhere else. So I'll just hit cancel, but you'll hit save on your end. So now that we have a metric, let's go jump over to the alerts. So we're going to create a new rule. This will be for workstation. And this will be Google Chrome, vulnerable, OS. Let's call it that. You, you're, you're welcome to call it whatever. This will be the title of the ticket uh, when it gets generated. So this, this is completely up to you. Uh, let's go ahead and choose. I'm going to choose that same machine to, to test this against. Again, this is just a, a kind of a sandbox or a machine you're testing against. And then now I'm going to pull that metric I just created and I'm going to use this operator is not empty. Would this trigger? Yes. So essentially this metric is always going to return a value if it's not on the support, if, it, if it's on a, a vulnerable version, it's going to return what version it is. So we always want to know if that's not empty because that will let us know effectively that this is a action we need to take to go update this Chrome. So once you're done with the operator, then you can go down to the alert content. And this can be anything you want to communicate to your team so they know what to do. So this is custom text you can put in here. But, um, you know, update this, update the Google Chrome OS for this machine. Current version is, what's cool here is if you hit this table and you use the same metric, when this alert gets generated, it will dynamically insert that ver the, the value that comes back to this metric into this placeholder text. I like to kind of strip out this right here because this is the name of the metric. I don't necessarily need that. So you could backspace that out. 
And now this will read as the current version is, and then inside these double curly brackets, whatever the value is will, will get placed in there. That's it, we can leave alert comments alone. We'll hit save. And as always, remember, we'll hit finish here. Once you create, go to rules. Once you create an actionable alert, it will not trigger until you apply it to one of your templates, your actionable alert templates. So as a reminder, remember you have to jump over to your templates and you have to apply that alert to one of your current templates um, that's attached to your environments. So the last step would be just to, uh, to assign that ticket or assign that alert to that template. Um, we could do this many ways. Let's say this was the template that I wanted to use. We could just edit it. We need to just filter down to that name. I'm uh, sorry, not WebP, but WebP. No, what did I call it? Uh, let me do this. Chrome. There it is. Google Chrome Vulnerable OS. And I'll just click it on and I would enable this inside this template and save it. And now the next time that the Windows Workstation Inspector runs, it'll trigger the alert to let you know if you have this, if this machine is currently being affected. There's nothing also stopping you from going to Inspectors. You create these alerts, going to your Windows Workstation entry, and you can always bulk run all those machines after you add it to the template uh, and run them right there at that point in time to get a response back for which machines you need to go target. So this is one way to actually send it to your PSA and get it in front of your team to take more action, or we can run the report, export it, and, uh, and hand it over to the appropriate person to, to remediate this way. The quick takeaway though here is that we can do this across all the Windows workstations, all the servers for all your environments at mass. Um, hope this is helpful today. Please feel free to leave any feedback on the, on the, on the video. Uh, discussion here. And thank you so much. I hope you all have a great day.